Good morning everyone. I hope you're all well. Got me Lomo 3x3 meter tarp set up with me outkit trekking poles. Just a little thank you video today. Just to say thank you for helping me reach 3000 plus subscribers. So today is a bit of a little celebration really. We'll be celebrating a lot later on of course as it's going to be New Year. Apologies by the way, I still haven't got the the back camera on the phone fix so I'm sort of filming selfie mode apologies for that I've got my little sports camera as well I might try it out but I just have to make do with this I'm afraid I thought it's better than no video so our next ration pack is this Latvian uh, field ration number five now I don't think it's a 24 hour ration pack um, there's probably I say it's probably about 12 hours worth in there. There's enough for like a small breakfast, a small lunch, and a small dinner, I reckon. Um, the packaging's a little bit damaged. It's because I've had this one so long. I kept taking it out on wild camps and never ate it, and then ended up bringing it back home. And sometimes it got a bit wet in the rain and stuff. So that's why the the, the packaging's dying a little bit on it. But contents should still all be in good condition. Um, I'm going to try and find some way of setting up the camera so that uh, you can, you know, you can see what we're doing and stuff. But my tripod's broken as well, so <laughs> everything's gone wrong lately. I'm afraid. Um, so yeah, we'll do our best anyway. So I'll get back to you once I've figured out a way. Anyway, right, let's have a look. Okay, well, I think I've found a way that works, so hopefully it's going to stay in place. Um, oh, yeah, also, seeing as it is a bit of a celebration video, I've got another little cider to review to try out. This one's currently good. It's a black currant cider. It's 4%. Better than the average currant. And it's by Cottage Delight. Established in only 1974 and it is bottled for Cottage Delight by Staffordshire Brewery. Nigel Cope is director, shareholder and chief taster for Staffordshire Brewery. It's not a bad job. Um, Cottage Delight from Leek in the Staffordshire Moorlands. So they've got a little website as well. You might just be able to see that hopefully. So let's, let's read the blurb on it. A lightly sparkling medium cider with the perfect combination of apples and blackcurrant. All of our ciders are made to traditional brewing methods and in some cases sediment can be found. Don't be alarmed, this is natural and all part of small batch production. Nice. So this is like, kind of like some of those IPAs and stuff. I know my mate Tommy's tried some small batch stuff out before. It's almost like experimentation kind of stuff. It, it feels pretty cool that you're like a human guinea pig for alcoholic beverages do you know what? I'm gonna crack it open now it's actually half 11 in the morning but oh well <laughs> you have to apologize there's a few noisy dogs a few houses over shut up here we go it's got some fizz to it cheers everyone thank you for 3,000 subs, many more to come. Shut up. Anyway, <laughs> that's um, that's different. And it's not overly sweet. I know I say that a lot of times. You can sort of taste a slight sediment to it. And it, it looks like it's gonna be really fizzy, but it's actually not. That's surprisingly good, that. Kind of a, a warm kind of taste to it. I don't really know. It's really good. Yeah, really nice. I don't know. <laughs> I wish I could tell you more about that, but I think it's it's pretty good. Like, you know, I'd give it a nine out of ten. It's actually really nice. I don't know why, but I like it. Sometimes you know when you just can't put your finger on something, it's just like it's just good. Mm, that's a winner that one. Anyway, cheers everyone. <laughs> Let's start looking at this Latvian Army ration pack. It's got English on it as well. And it tells you what's inside it. It says the total ration calorific value is 2,153. And it gives you like a breakdown of the calories as well. Uh, 
per item. I've included a little hot chocolate just because I know for a fact that all the hot beverages in this are all coffees. So I'll probably mix them all together because there's about four coffees or something. So our main meal comes in this little tin and this is meat with vegetables, 250 grams. So we'll be cooking that up on the solid fuel stove. Something has leaked inside. I think it could be, yeah, I think it is this apricot jam here. So we've got a little, one of those, yeah, it looks like it's leaked. <laughs> a little tub of honey, 20 grams. There's a 50 gram packet of almonds. Nice. Probably snack on those throughout most of the day. We've got like a kind of a vacuum sealed, uh, I think there's one or two bits of rye bread. Interesting. 100 grams. So we'll have the, the honey and the jam with that, I'm guessing. And then that's all for in the main, the main pouch. This is rice porridge with strawberries. A citrus flavour green tea by Lipton. There's our spoon. It feels pretty flimsy, I'm not going to lie. So um, I've got cutlery somewhere just in case. Uh, we've got a big packet of sugar. 20 grams that's gonna we're gonna use that I think for all of our coffees oh no sorry we've got another one as well 20 grams again so we've got 40 grams of sugar in total <laughs> they give you a little solid fuel stove these are really cool because you get a few uses out of these ones three uh, no four four little tiny Esbit tablets box of matches and a rubber band and some instructions Bon Bonita Mint, so some sweets I'm guessing. Check those out. There's quite a lot of sugar in this one. There's a lemon refreshing towel, wet wipe, whatever you want to call it. Power gum. <laughs> Spearmint flavour. Four coffees. Four Nescafe Classic, strong and rich. Now some women like their men. Sorry, anyway, um, I think one of them feels like it's, yeah, this one, it's a bit hard and crunchy inside, so that's probably no good that one, so we could just mix up all three, <laughs> I'll probably be, I probably won't sleep then, but anyway, yeah, so that is the contents, um, as I say, I can't really film sort of me setting it all up it's a bit difficult that so I don't know how we're going to do this but I'll find a way anyway so what I'll probably do is I'll probably prepare it all and then I'll show you um you can tell I've not planned this um I'll, I'll show you sort of as I'm about to eat it we'll do it like that something like that so apologies but bear with us um yeah anyway it's enough yakking let's get snacking Okay, this is probably about the best angle I can really get of the setup. As I say, using the like the front camera on the phone. So, as you can see, I've got the little solid fuel stove out, um, boiling up some water for the for the hot drink. So I've put I've put three sachets of coffee in, my fudge hot chocolate, and one of the 20 gram packets of sugar. I had to bin one of the. Nest Cafe coffees just because it had all clumped together and dried out some moisture had obviously got into it so yeah we're gonna have that first um, I'm having a look at this this rye bread and it literally look, looks like two bits of old leather it says it expires on the 1st of February 2019 so it's in date and <laughs> It looks, doesn't look the most appetising, I think these are stuck together. It smells more like, um, like malt loaf. Oh. Oh. I don't know, if that, I don't know what that tastes like, it doesn't taste like any kind of bread. Oh, that is, that's grim. Oh, 
I'm going to put some uh, <laughs> sort of horrible aftertaste to it as well. It's so not really chewy. It's got no consistency to it, and it's like got a shiny sort of flat surface to it. It is. I suppose it's like shelf stable bread, but it don't even look like bread. It don't even really look like cake or. I can't describe what it's like really. I'm gonna to have to use the the honey and the apricot jam with that definitely. Let's use the uh, the wet white while we're here. Strong lemon smell to it, which is nice. Not particularly uh, moist wet white, should we say? I'll tell you what, let's have a look at the sweets next. Sealed in their own individual individual wrappers and there we go you get two four six seven and they look Russian and they if you can see that I think they're Russian or something and there we go so it's just like a, a hard-boiled sweet yeah, minty. You definitely have to suck these ones, you can't chew them. They're basically like a fox's uh, glacier mint, glacier mint, whatever, yeah. To be honest with you, I was kind of certain that they would be alright, unlike the, the rye bread and everything else. Let's try the apricot jam out first, that's a bit different. Mm, it smells nice. There you go. This rye bread, I, as I say, it is two bits, but they've like fused together. So let's just break it up into into chunks. I'll be honest with you, I can't see me eating a hell of a lot of this. I think I'd have to swamp it in in jam and honey and stuff for it to work. Okay, let's give it a try. Yeah, you definitely need uh, the apricot jam or the honey just to mask the the blandness of that rye bread. So, it's still not great though. Oh, that was, that was too big a bite. That is one of the worst things I've ever eaten in a ration pack. That, yeah, I need more, more Esbit tablets on the uh, stove. Of course, they never really give you enough solid fuel tablets in these ration packs. It only came with four little mini Esbit ones. And... I've already gone through two trying to boil the water and it's not like it's really windy here or anything it's if anything it's optimal conditions so I'm on the last two now um, yeah and I've still got to boil up water for the tea the porridge stuff like that so yeah they don't really give you enough but luckily I've got some spare ones so I would say if you're thinking of getting a ration pack um, I don't like to give out advice, but you know, it sounds preachy. But if you're going to get a ration pack and it's got a solid fuel stove in it, I would recommend always bringing some of these. Like if you're going camping or whatever, or for a walk, always bring some of these. Or just cheat and bring a gas stove with you as well. <laughs> so <laughs> if you run out of tablets, which you most likely will do, you've got something to fall back on. Let's try out some of these almonds next. I mean, I'm not expecting anything special from them, they're just almonds after all. Let's move some stuff about. Oh. Yep, nothing special really, just standard almonds really. Yeah, it's basically rice with tiny bits of strawberries in. It's not really porridge. You know, that's always confusing. A lot of the Eastern European ones, they they describe everything as porridge, or if it's a mixture of something, it's porridge. And, yeah, it, it's more just like, basically, like, uh, you know, like sweet rice. You know, kind of like ambrosia or something. I kind of take back what I said about it being enough for 24 hours. Maybe not. The portion sizes, I mean, you know, with our, that's our main meal. And you've got that horrible old rye bread. 
some rice porridge, you know, a few hot drinks and, and snacks and some jam. So it, it's, I don't know, a filling meal, maybe two meals at a push, but uh, yeah, you, you wouldn't want to be on this site for 24 hours. I think it, you'd probably be in a, a severe calorie deficit, so like starvation mode, especially if you're moving about a lot, troops, if they're you know, carrying a lot of equipment or if they're fighting or on patrol or whatever, you know, they're they're gonna they're gonna get through this pretty quick. They're gonna burn through those calories quickly. So yeah, probably best not for twenty four hours. Still waiting on a boil, so it's taking ages so I got a bit bored so I thought let's try out the uh, the power gun spearmint. So I think it's actually a stick of gum. Yeah, it is. I haven't had one of these for years. Still got some bend to it, so it's not completely brittle. Yeah, there we go. Old school. A nice subtle flavour to it. They're so much better than those little pellets. I mean, they're good, but you can't beat like a, you know, a stick of gum. That consistency is so much nicer. At last, we have a boil. Ended up taking like two of these big tablets to actually boil it. I'm going to try and keep the stove lit. So I'll just keep cooking up stuff on it. See how the spoon holds up. I think the spoon's melted. <laughs> I could just feel it sinking into the into the into the drink. <laughs> it's fouled that straight away. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this on the stove straight away. So this is our meat with vegetables. It smells quite nice. There you go. It's like it's got some kind of fat or membrane around it. So we'll just leave that off just so we can keep an eye on it. There we go. With the water we've got left over in here, I'll make up the rice porridge in this with that. And there we go, I've got my little little Tom shoe. Oh no, it's not Tom shoe. EDC gear spoon. Got it with a Tom shoe pot. So I think we've got to give this a bit of a mix and it says to leave it for like eight minutes been waiting around so long I think I would have starved to death by now and I'll just keep an eye on the main meal on the stove it's got a very very strong coffee smell to it <laughs> should have three sachets of coffee in it I don't know if that's actually safe to do that me being not being a, a coffee drinker so I'm usually having like one at a time but three I don't know about <laughs> happy new year <laughs> well it's bloody hot and that is strong that is the strongest coffee I've ever had but I think if I was going to have coffee that's probably how I'd have it oh, that is you can just about taste the hot chocolate in it glad I put the whole pack of sugar in it as well Oh, oh, it's so strong. <laughs> I'll leave it to cool down for a little bit. The coffee has uh, cooled down enough now for me to, to drink it. It's not bad actually, it's quite nice. It is very strong, I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, I can drink it though. I mean, I did add that hot chocolate to it, so it's not a fair test really, I guess. The meat and vegetables is, is doing alright. I added another tablet to it just to make sure it kept going um, I had a little taste of the juices just a second ago and it was yeah it's a bit artificial shall we say it's that usual kind of meat and vegetables taste that you get in a ration pack especially Eastern European ones uh, rice porridge with strawberries this actually looks like it's mixed up quite well don't know if you're gonna be able to see that in the bottom of the pot 
I could pour it out on the tray. I'm going to probably do that with the uh, the meat and vegetables. Let's just have this as is. So there we go. Oh, I've got a very strong smell to it or taste. <laughs> it has like um like rehydrated, but it's still very very dry. It's not very sweet at all. I'm tempted to add the sugar to it, to be honest. Might as well stick the whole bag in. <laughs> Famous last words. Too late now, right. Huh. Yeah, it's certainly sweeter. It's still not great though. I mean, it's better than that rye bread, definitely. I tend to find the Eastern European ones aren't as well stocked, so they don't have as much stuff in them or as good quality stuff, so. Um, but they're always interesting because there's always something new that you've not tried before or eaten. And it, it's almost like sometimes they include like that country's cuisine or delicatessen, so you, you kind of get into sample different, different, um, different foods from different countries which is quite cool I probably won't go Latvia though but <laughs> judging by this but nah it's it's not bad some of it but some of it could definitely be a lot better so far and the spoon was awful of course okay well I've, I think I've given the the main meal long enough I've got the the Lipton lemon flavoured green tea all ready to go and uh, I'm going to boil up some more water just for the tea. It smells quite good actually. I mean it's probably going to give me the two bob bits tomorrow but yeah, happy new year. <laughs> it does look a bit like cat food I'm not going to lie at this point. all of it <laughs> there we go looks like it's got some onions in it as well so a lot of sauces like a beefy tomato sauce I guess I can't see what vegetables are in it other than onions and there we go very chewy there's a little bit of gristle in there oh it could do with something else with it like some chunks of potatoes or just more vegetables it's just basically meat I don't even want to know what meat it is I mean <laughs> it could be could be horse meat for all I know that is like I'm pretty hungry at the moment because I say I've not eaten but oh, what a way to celebrate 3,000 subscribers Tom bloody hell sure do pick them <laughs> oh sorry guys I don't know if I can actually finish that that is it's awful oh I'm trying to think what you could mix with. I mean, I suppose maybe you could dip your rye bread in it as well. But, well, if the rye bread actually came apart, it's two bits that are fused together, so... I need some of me uh, currently good to wash that down with. That is, that's horrible. Oh, I was really looking forward to it. You know when you, you, know when you eat something and you just know that it's not good, it's not it's not come from a good source you know like people say they can ta they can taste the difference between um, free range hens and like battery hens for example that's what it reminds me of it tastes like that animal's had a hard life it just doesn't taste good for you I know I'm sat drinking a cider but I that is horrible no sorry I can't eat anymore that is horrible I hate to waste food as well you know I think there's people out there 
starving and stuff. You know, if I could send them that, I would. Because they'd eat it. I, I bloody well couldn't. No. Right. Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway. Oh, that's better. Yeah, that's horrible. So the main meal's horrible. The rye bread was awful. That's the worst thing out of the lot. I'd literally say the mints, the almonds, the rice porridge with strawberries wasn't bad. I had to add sugar to it. Uh, it wasn't great, but it was, it was, I could sit and eat that. It was okay, because I've got quite a sweet tooth. Um, you know, I haven't had the honey yet either. I don't know if I'm going to bother, but the, uh, yeah, like the jam, the apricot jam was nice. It was just what it went with was was awful. Um, and the hot drinks have been alright, really. The coffees, like I said, I did mix it with hot chocolate, so sort of cheating. Uh, we're just waiting on the, the green tea to see what that's like. But apart from that, yeah, it's not been a good one, this. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'd feed that to a, an animal. <laughs> it, it's... Oh, just looking at it's making me feel a bit, a bit funny. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> We've gone back to, as I say, using. I'm still using up the last of my larger square tablets. So I ended up burning sort of the box of matches, all the matches and everything, just to sort of get some kind of heat. So this is this Lipton. Uh, citrus green tea that is literally the last thing of this ration pack I mean the solid fuel stove I suppose is alright because I've used these before and usually you can use those ones again could do with more tablets you could definitely do with better cutlery they only give you one wet wipe they don't give you any napkins or paper towels nothing like that and I think you could do with like a cold a cold beverage as well um, you know it's, it's a lot of hot drinks there's a lot of coffees and I just think it's a bit overkill you know there's one like you know green tea you know there's not a normal tea I mean I like green tea so win-win for me yeah you could just do with a little bit more variety there and I think with the with the hot meals it could definitely do with some quality going into it I mean that it's meant to be meat and vegetables. There's like there's no vegetables in it. There's there's some like bits of shredded onion and that is literally it. So and it just tastes very cheap, a bit artificial. You could tell there's a lot of preservatives in it. It I know you're not meant to expect too much from ration packs, but I expect more than that. That was it was awful. I couldn't eat it. Uh the rye bread was awful as well. And it was in day, it was just, yeah, it was just, I don't know, it didn't taste like bread at all, it didn't taste like anything, it was just, it was just awful. Um, yes, yeah, so all in all, it's not been the best one, I'm afraid. Oh, it smells really nice, really nice citrus smell to it. Oh, that's lovely. So hopefully we can end on a good note with this then. So as this is my 3,000 subscriber celebration video, I just want to say a really big thank you to everyone for subscribing, both old and new subscribers, and putting up with me as well. Um, I know I do polarise opinions quite a bit in the outdoor YouTube community, so to speak, but I'm doing what I want to do how I want to do it, so... If you don't like it don't watch the videos of course but to those of you that do and do enjoy them in some funny way yeah thank you very much I do appreciate it um, so when I've got time I will try and reply to everyone's comments and stuff it's just if I'm really busy with editing and work and stuff then it can be difficult at times but I mean at the very least I'll like your comments sort of thing so I will see it if that makes sense um, of course some YouTubers don't I can't say they don't have a job but they 
this is like their main job or something so they can invest more time in it whereas I've got two jobs so it's quite difficult sometimes for me to to actually find time I technically really get one day off a week from work so sort of trying to you know I like to try and get one to two videos out a week um, going forward I might have to drop it down to one video a week um, we'll sort of see really I always try and get a wild camp or a, a day walk in each week uh, and as I say the others will be like ration reviews or maybe talking about bits of equipment I've got stuff like that really uh, yeah I've got a few videos left to, to edit and upload still so I'll, you know some of them are from like summer of 2018 so I'll try and get those posted um, as and when I get the time I also want to say a big thank you for making uh, Candice feel really welcome on the channel as well her confidence is growing definitely she's getting more confident in front of the camera and stuff like that and I think that's all down to all of you for making her feel welcome and you know in positively encouraging her and you know just it's, it's it's really nice to see and you know she really appreciates it as well she'd she'd say the same if she was you know if she was here and she could tell you but yeah it's it's really nice of you that and I've had a few cock ups this year like who island and stuff like that I mean it was fun don't get me wrong but I wouldn't advise doing anything like that or how we did it anyway but it was nice that I didn't necessarily get condemned or anything everyone was like we're glad you're safe and things like that and yeah it's a really positive vibe really from everyone um, so it's been a good year and yeah this last thousand subscribers have, it's been really good so yeah thank you of course the next thing now is to get to 4,000 as always I'm just going to keep going really until I've had enough which isn't yet so it's still quite hard to believe really that I'm actually doing this that I'm you know making a channel talking on camera and stuff I've never really been confident don't like my voice I don't like being on camera or anything really believe it or not but YouTube has helped me confront that I think and I've actually gained quite a lot of self-confidence from it as well it's slowly sort of become part of my life really you know people go oh you've been anywhere this weekend you've been doing this because they know that that's what I do or if I'm posting it on Instagram which I've started doing as well now I think it's Tom Outdoors 88 something like that um, I share it on like my Facebook as well stuff like that so you know word gets around and that and I think that's helped but I've got to start doing more social media stuff for the channel which is it's tedious but it's got to be done I guess I've got a, sort of a few plans and stuff for the channel. I've um, I've already treated myself to the latest version of the the editing software that I use. Um, so it was a bit of money, but you know I thought I, I set myself to. I was like, once I get to 3,000 subscribers, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to upgrade the software. Um, I've got like lists of, of places I want to go and walks and wild camps that I want to do, places that I want to explore like urbex stuff. So I've got all that sort of planned out for the next for the next year easily. I mean I've got enough stuff for the next few years, trust me. <laughs> You're going to be sick of it by then. Um you know, everything's I've sort of got everything kind of planned out. You know, I've got ciders lined up that I want to review on the wild camps and stuff. I've got ration packs that I want to review, cameras and stuff. That's my next thing I've got to look at. I've got, a, as I say, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep experimenting with this little handy hero sports camera, but it, it's not that great to be honest with you. It does the bare minimum. I need to get the phone fixed, of course. The back camera is like really blurry and stuff, and. I've tried every trick in the book that I've read online and I think I'm either going to have to take it, take it in and get it fixed or just just leave it really just you know get a new camera get a new phone which is a shame because nothing else on the phone is broken it's just that um, I'm considering getting an upgrade anyway and it'll probably have a better camera on it 
in terms of actually getting a proper proper camera you know like people get like these DSLRs and GoPros and oh I don't I don't know what they are I've no idea I don't do technology it is tempting but at the same time I kind of want to stick with the phone you know I personally feel like the quality on the phone's not that bad if I got maybe a, a better phone it might have a better quality camera course on it like my mate Alex's phone that I've just done the uh, the River Waveney video on so yeah I, I th I'd stick with that because it's so easy to use and convenient and you know it's just it's better I think it's easier just having less hardware and tech to carry around with you if you've just got your phone and stuff it's it's not so bad and to be honest with you as well kind of one of the one of the aims of the channel is I, I kind of want people that are maybe just starting out or thinking of getting into like wild camping and walking and like maybe even setting up a channel as well I want I want it to come across as like anyone could do it you can give it a go you know, you haven't got to be like some Ray Mears wannabe or some rubbish. I think a lot of the outdoor industry almost tries to make people fearful of the outdoors. Like, you have to have this, you have to be able to know how to do this. Yeah, you know, you've you've got to buy this, you've got to learn this, you've got to do this, or you're going to die. It's rubbish. You know, it, I mean, it depends on where you live, to be fair, okay? If you lived somewhere like really barren where the weather's really bad and stuff yeah you've got to be a bit more prepared but, but I'm not going to lie around here it's not that bad to be honest with you I mean yeah we get some bad weather every now and then but you can you can kind of get by really you know you don't have to have all this expensive equipment you know I think if you're getting into the outdoors and wild camping and stuff just start off with the basics start off with sort of cheap not rubbish gear but cheap affordable sort of gear see if you see if you like it you know if you if you're not going to enjoy it then you've wasted all that money and you've got to stick it on ebay and someone like me will buy it but you're better off starting with the cheap and cheerful stuff just to get you into it first see if you like it and then you gradually upgrade your equipment as you go you get better quality tents you know that maybe cost a bit more and better bivy bags and better stoves and you know clothing and stuff you upgrade you know like I started off with this cheap trespass down jacket and I've moved on to the OEX down jacket albeit I got that out of steel but I think I think that's the one if I was going to give any advice that's what I would suggest personally I'm probably going to get loads of negative comments about that stuff and I don't really care to be honest like that's what's worked for me might not work for you I just think I can't see the point in spending loads of money on something and you're not sure if you're going to like it. So start off with stuff and then upgrade it. Kind of treat yourself to stuff as you go along. And yeah, teach yourself little basic skills and stuff. But most of the time you can get by with the basics and stuff really. And I think yeah, just enjoy it really. Just give it a go. I mean, at the worst what's going to happen you might get a little bit wet a little bit cold but you know you'd be all right really and yeah you just haven't got to spend a lot of money on stuff and when it comes to sort of as i say like if you were thinking about setting up a channel i just think start with the basics you know focus on like your content and stuff first and at the end of the day i think a lot of it's down to personality really if people get along with you as a person sort of thing then you'll be all right. I mean, I don't know how I've got a bike because I'm a fucking arsehole, but it's yeah. You you don't need a fancy camera and stuff. Yeah, the the quality will look great and stuff, but do you really need that to set like to get a channel going and stuff? Like the camping equipment, you could start off with just your phone. Yeah, just that's what I want to like. I really like it when people go, Tom. I've been watching your videos and I've decided I want to start filming stuff and make a channel. My mate Ben did the same. Owen sort of started filming stuff as well and things like that. I just think it's great. You know, that people are inspired to do that. I mean, just, yeah, grab your phone, get a cheap tripod, you know, find, you know, a, a walk near you. You don't have to go to the Peak District or Dartmoor or Scotland or 
all these great places where it's walkers country and walking territory everyone goes camping there and stuff you just do something that's local to you and stuff you know grab the OS map or download it whatever you do nowadays find a route you know get a cheap and cheerful little setup together you know grab your phone and just get out there and just film it film it however you want you haven't got to do it like really fancy you haven't got to be Steven Spielberg just just document it and stuff like that it's that starting just start doing it and stuff that's what a lot of people I think struggle to do you know or they watch certain channels and they go oh I could never do that that's too difficult you know that's that requires a lot of skill and effort no it doesn't honestly some of it doesn't anyway um, it depends on what you want to get out of it if you just want to share stuff with people just do it however you want really yeah so and I've got no time for people that say oh it was the wind noise was awful on your video and stuff like that well I'm outside I'm on top of a hill of course it's going to be windy stuff like that you know people that try and make it all perfect and stuff it's just sometimes I like to hear that on people's videos I call that weather sounds savage you know I get an understanding of what they're going through I know I'm rambling on a bit here but I just thought it's a point I've got to get across so yeah anyway see what this <laughs> this tea's like sorry about that anyway it's all right, a bit bland. Yeah, it's not bad. There's a, a faint citrus taste to it. I'm not getting any green tea taste coming through though. It just tastes a bit like lemon and lime hot water, really. But it's all right, it's refreshing though. That's the most refreshing drink out of all of them. The coffees weren't, but this is all right. I think that's probably been the most successful thing out of the whole, uh, <laughs> whole video, really. Ration pack was a bit of a disaster, so yeah, apologies about that. Thanks for listening and putting up with me and for the last three years or wherever I've been doing this for. I'm not going to give any shout outs, you know who you are, people that subscribe, that leave me really nice comments, excuse me, sorry, it's, it is really appreciated and I know that you all watch other videos of course and stuff but the fact that you make time to see mine, to watch mine, I think that's pretty cool. And when people are like trying to get in first to watch the video and they go first or you know like notification squad and stuff i find that bizarre that people were clicking on stuff straight away as soon as they sit like well i've got to watch that but it's great i really appreciate it but <laughs> and i really haven't got a clue what i'm doing i'm still winging it i'm still making this stuff up so yeah let's give it a go you know, that's the only like bit of advice I want to give is just get out there and just give it a try. You know, just what's the worst that can happen? It's not that bad, honestly. He says. eBay's good as well. Just look for stuff on eBay. Don't just go straight in the shops and buy stuff. Like go outdoors or wherever and all that. Like look for it on eBay first. You know. You can always go in the shops and, and try the tents out and stuff like that. And then go and look for them on eBay, really. That's that's it. You know, start off with like a, a basic little one-man tent or a two-man tent. However many of you are planning on doing it, of course. And like a bivvy bag. Yeah, they're your basic things. And a tarp. That could be like your two sort of main shelters to start with. Hammocks, I think, are... I know I'm going to get some stick for this, but are overrated, I think. You have to take a lot of equipment for them, and of course you've got to rely on there being trees. So you can't really use a hammock on a beach, for example, it's a bit difficult. So that's why I'm really not a fan of them. Um, they're comfy to sit in though, don't get me wrong, but yeah, I just can't see the point. I think tarps and bivvies, hoot bivvies, tents, that's that's my kind of favourite kind of shelters. So. I get yourself something like that. I mean, best thing is probably start off with a tent because you know it's more reliable. You're gonna feel sort of safer in it and stuff. Um, you know, because some people are not used to. You know, if you've never been wild camping before, you're not used to sort of being out in the outdoors or the open. A campsite is very sanitised and safe. You feel snack. You feel sorry. You suit. <laughs> you feel safe. And secure but then as soon as you get outside people think oh I'm gonna get stabbed or murdered and stuff and it's rubbish you won't trust me 
I've found people are more are more terrified of of you, the wild camper, because they think, what's this strange bloke or woman doing, sleeping in the woods or something on their own, or whatever? They think you're like mad. Um, yeah, they're more scared of you than than you should be of them, really. Um, and I mean, in this country, there's no like really dangerous animals or anything that could kill you or anything like that. It's not too bad. I've always said like I'm more scared of like being in towns and cities or driving on the roads and stuff it's other people <laughs> the thing to be scared of honestly you know, you're more likely to get mugged or something in the cities than you are attacked in the middle of nowhere wild camping it's actually a lot safer than you think so you know the the only thing you've got to contend with is if the weather turns are you you know are you prepared enough for that and stuff other than that that's it I think more people should get out there and do it and stuff and who knows you never know government might end up legalizing it but I don't I don't honestly think more people would end up wild camping as a result of it being legalized I think I still think only a f like a few of us would do it because a lot of people, as I say, think it's too frightening or they think it's quite an inaccessible kind of thing to get into, really. You know, you have to buy this, you have to know how to do this and all that. And it's not true, but... So I think it's still going to be this, the same... You're not going to suddenly get a, a swell in, in people wanting a wild camp. Um, I just think... I don't know, I just think it'll be... A, it would be a bit easier, you could sort of go more or less wherever you want. I understand not camping on a farmer's field or private land and stuff, but if it's like, I don't know, if it's like beaches or beside rivers and stuff like that, and it's, I suppose it's just owned by the crown, the land, it's like, why not? Just let them do it, you know. The, it's the, the problem is, it's like a lot of things in life, really. It's just a small minority of people, idiots, that ruin it for everyone else and the government goes oh I'm gonna ban it that's it you know it's you know because they leave rubbish or they set fire to stuff or they graffiti stuff and make a load of noise or whatever it's it gives wild campers a really bad name and as a result you know it's like you can't make exceptions really we know not everyone's like that far from it but it's just easier for them to say no and go it's all bad you could set fire to my trees you could leave rubbish in the field and stuff like that just no so it's a difficult one really but I'll tell you what I shouldn't have had them free coffees I ain't stopped talking sorry all right anyways yeah so yeah thank you very much for 3,000 subscribers both old and new subscribers Cheers for watching the channel and continuing to do so. I better sign off now. <laughs> Sorry, I got really comfortable just sitting there, just chatting away and stuff. Um, yeah, first sign of badness talking to yourself. That was a Latvian Army ration pack, field ration number five. I've been Tom. Your support has been fantastic this year and the previous years. Long may it continue. Hope you all had a good Christmas and hope you have a fabulous new year, 2019. And you'll see me then. Cheers for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves. Look after each other. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> Bang in.